Welcome to Coffee and RPGs. My name is Solomon and it's Kane. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. I'm a little congested right now, so I do apologize if the video's uh, quality suffers a bit because of that. But in any event, we got a lot of news to cover, so if you guys got your beverage of choice, let's cover the news together. Cheers to you guys. And really quick before we begin, we head on over to PCGamer.com. Twitch Prime subscribers get six free games in the month of May. And here's the list of games that are free. That includes Snake Pass and Urban Trial Playground. But I have actually never heard of it, heard of any of these games, unfortunately. But you also get additional loot in the month of May, uh, which includes a selection of cosmetics and content bundles for Borderlands 3. Legends of Runeteria, Destiny 2, Team Fight, Tactics, Apex, Legends, Fallout 76, and Rainbow Six Siege, just to name a handful. And from GamesRadar.com, Assassin's Creed 2, Rayman Legends, Child of Light, and more are free to keep once again. And this is all part of Ubisoft's Play Apart Together program. So if you don't have Assassin's Creed 2, I highly recommend that one. It's a, it's a very fun game, even if it is an older game. And lastly, we head on over to Polygon.com. Sony says it knows who leaked The Last of Us Part 2. And I know this has been getting a lot of news lately, which I haven't covered because it isn't really an MMO, nor is it an RPG. Although it does have RPG elements, I probably could have gotten away with it. But it turns out that the leakers, there's more than one people uh, in this, um, isn't involved with Naughty Dog or with Sony. And uh, they couldn't say anything more than that, but I'll definitely have the article down in the pinned comment section below if this is something that you're interested in. So with this particular article, I know I went a little highlighting heavy, uh, but bear with me because I think it's one of the more interesting news that we've covered so far. But heading over to MassivelyOP.com, cryptocurrency monetized sandbox MMO Ember Sword gets $700,000 in funding, opens pre-registration. So it says that it's an upcoming sandbox MMORPG that touts a number of the usual features like PvE and PvP and one unusual feature in the shape of a cryptocurrency based player economy which cosmetic items that are limited in number to make them more collectible and can be traded among players for Pixel, the title's blockchain blockchain based currency. If you heard of Bitcoin and this might go without saying, uh, then you've heard of blockchain or cryptocurrency. Now, in their words, they go on to say, we only use blockchain tech for the player to player economy and premium currency to enable players to freely trade these items in a secure way, as opposed to making them against our TOS and distribute them through gameplay instead of selling them through loot boxes or the like. So let's unpack that for a bit. The implication here is that they won't be using loot boxes, which is always a plus because I would argue many of us here feel like they're just a gotcha mechanic at this point. I would also argue that many of us like to play online games and MMORPGs because there is a sense of satisfaction in being able to obtain rare titles and items and being able to show them off uh, in front of other players. So for them to be able to provide or um, have items at a certain level of scarcity and also allowing players to have that sort of satisfaction as well by also doing away with loot boxes at the same time, I think is in the right direction. Now the article does continue in saying, regardless of how you might feel about this blockchain economy, it's full steam ahead for the title as developer Brightstar Studios has reached $700,000 in pre-seed funding from venture capital firm Play Ventures. And now to sort of the nitty gritty aspects of the currency more or less. It goes on to read, on the subject of the game's cryptocurrency economy, that's seen an adjustment as well, with Pixel now an ERC7021 or non-fungible token. This ensures that the value of Pixel won't fluctuate and will allow players for a more easier and more secure third party trading of items, as well as a promise of the quote, highest possible level of transparency with items having a visible history to verify their scarcity as well as how much items have been traded for. So I know there was a lot there, so let's kind of dissect it just a little bit. The first thing I didn't understand was ERC721 or non-fungible token, what that meant. So I did actually find a video, which I will play a portion of it right now. In this guide, we're gonna look into what ERC721 means and how it enables developers to create unique digital tokens that represent valuable collectibles. Any kind of collectible can be referred to as non-fungible. 
This means that the value of the collectible is derived from their rarity and how unique they are. The opposite of this is something fungible, like currency, that has worth because it's ubiquitous and can be traded practically anywhere for a predictable amount of value. This 1952 baseball card of the legendary Mickey Mantle went for $2.8 million in auction. Would it have gone for that much if there were 100 other 1952 Mickey Mantle cards available? Definitely not. This principle is what defines an ERC721 token like a CryptoKitty. Now the name of the channel who made that video is called Block Geeks, and I think it was really well put, so I'll definitely have the link to that video down in the pinned comment section below. And from what I could gather so far, it doesn't it doesn't seem like you could actually uh, trade in their cryptocurrency for actual real money or cash in this case. I'm not sure. It, I could be wrong about that, but I haven't read anything so far that says otherwise. But it could be a possibility still. Who knows? But in any event, if you are interested in learning more about blockchaining or cryptocurrency, but you find it a little boring or just something beyond your comprehension, uh, this actually might be a good way for you to jump in and figure out the intricacies of what it's about by playing a game out of all things. So now I do have the trailer playing above me as you saw throughout my coverage of this article. And admittedly, it's not really my cup of tea, but because they're using cryptocurrency as their or part of their in-game economy, I'm very interested in now and that's why I'll definitely have to check this game out. I meant to cover this in the last episode, but for whatever reason, I accidentally skipped over it in my notes. But we head on over to MMORPG.com, third episode of Guild Wars 2 Ice Brute Saga to release without voice acting. And you could probably guess as to why it's because of the world uh, problem that we all know that we are facing right now. But they do go on to say that the team intends to keep releasing content for Guild Wars 2 in a regular schedule only once the situation or the current situation is safe will the team continue to create studio quality voice recording and update the episode accordingly next we head on over to altchar.com you'll notice that blue protocol just wrapped up their closed beta testing not too long ago and they revealed the PC requirements for the game. Bandai Namco has officially revealed the PC system requirements for their gorgeous looking anime MMO RPG Blue Protocol. Players will be happy to hear that the game is not demanding at all. So for their lowest image quality, all you need is a CPU of an i3-4340 as well as a NVIDIA GTX 660 or AMD R7-370. But if you are uh, somewhat of a graphics knob such as myself, <laughs> the uh, high image quality will require a CPU of an i7-7700 with their GPU requirements of a NVIDIA GTX 1060 or an AMD RX 580 as well. And you know, I wasn't really a fan of the uh, Camelot Unchained game, but this actually might change my mind a bit. Next we head on over to MassivelyOP.com. Mark Jacobs says Kamala Unchained's 90 day plan still on track. And to understand the 90 day plan that the article was talking about, we head on to another article within MassivelyOP.com. Here are highlights from Kamala Unchained's Siege Warfare demo and roadmap reveal. So if you scroll all the way down in this article, there is a screenshot of the 90 day plan that we were talking about earlier. I'm not going to go through all of it just because it's such a comprehensive list and it would just take me forever. But going back to the previous article that was speaking about Mark Jacobs, he says, I'm happy to say that we intend to do the same thing over the next 90 days, laying out a detailed plan which puts CU at the forefront of our development with the vast majority of the studio's resource going to continue and expand the game. So when the 90 day runs out, expect another detailed plan from us showing what we are working to deliver. And here's a really cool part. I actually went down to the comment section below and by all accounts, this is the actual Mark Jacobs interacting with his fans on massivelyop.com, which I found really cool. But it's not just once or twice, but if you scroll down, he responds to almost everybody. And yeah, admittedly, this this really impresses me because I know a lot of developers will kind of stay within their own bubble. But Mark Jacobs actually goes out there uh, to third party websites. And yeah, he's uh, he's interacting with everybody, which uh, kudos to him. Next, we head on over to MMORPG.com. EverQuest server merch starts on May 19th. 
On one hand, I'm really glad such uh, an older MMO such as EverQuest is still around and uh, possibly thriving, but at the same time, it looks like they're losing a lot of players as well. That's, or at least that's why I assume they're doing the server merge. But in any event, Lockjaw will merge with Ragefire. Trakanion, and, and I'm probably butchering that name, will merge with Vox. But then it also says Flippy will merge with Vox as well. So I don't know if that's a three in one, uh, according to this article. And Berect will merge with FV. The total downtime for this merger will be 23 hours starting on May 19th and concluding on May 20th. But if you want a more detailed information about the server merges, you could definitely head on to their main website at everquest.com news to find out more, such as name conflicts as well. Next, we head on over to massivelyop.com. Fallout 76 procrastinates on text chat, but promises looking for group system. It goes on to read that the studio admits that while it thought about adding text chat, a feature which players, quote, request often is not a priority for this year. On the other hand, the summer's quality of life update will include, quote, teams that will function as sort of a LFG system or looking for group system. Next, we head on over to altchart.com. Destiny 2 will ease up on FOMO in the new season. It goes on to read that Bungie are often coming under fire for employing fear of missing out or FOMO in Destiny 2 too much. And now it seems this will be dealt with in season 12. In other words, players will now be able to experience activities and story from past seasons all year long, but there still will be some limits and some content will have to be removed. Bungie noted that stories will have an end in order to let new ones grow in their place. Sticking with MMORPG.com, Elseward 9th Anniversary Celebration event live now. We've been covering a lot of anniversaries uh, this past month, so this is really cool. It goes on to read, the event is set to run through May 4th and includes several special events. If you log into the game for more than five minutes, you'll get a sweepstakes ticket. Players will need to pre-register at the website and could win rewards such as gaming monitors and exclusive Elseworld merchandise. Finally, there is a 300% XP boost, 200% drop rate, and unlimited stamina buff during the entirety of the event. And as always, I will definitely have the uh, link to their official site down in the pinned comment section below, which is elseword.coggames.com. If you want to check out the rules and regulations of their official sweepstake, as well as the various rewards from their ninth anniversary. Heading back over to MassivelyOP.com, Sea of Thieves turns down MSC progression and rewards in its latest patch. I guess the rewards were just a little too OP, <laughs> but it goes on to read. For the most part, the adjustments are on the nerf side of the scale, with Reaper's Bones Emissary seeing less gold and rep earned for turning in high-grade emissary flags, but more gold and rep for low-grade flags reduced rep for treasure turn-ins, and a downwards adjustment for emissary grade advancement via loot. Taking with MassivelyOP.com, Final Fantasy XI's anniversary content is being pushed to the future from its May update. And again, you, you already know why they're pushing this back is, uh, yeah, but moving on. From MMORPG.com, Star Wars The Old Republic extends double XP event, but it's not just experience, you also get double XP, Valor, Renown, and more. And again, this is to provide players who has to stay home because of the thing that I won't mention because YouTube is being YouTube. So last time I covered some of the DLC leaks from Conan Exiles, and going over to MassivelyOP.com, Conan Exiles shows off follower changes, and architect of Argos items in a live stream. A recent live stream of Conan Exiles had a lot of things to show off for fans of the survival sandbox. In terms of followers, there will be a new command system that can be used via radial menu or keyboard shortcuts that lets players issue commands to their follower, including attack commands, return commands, and moving to an area among other commands. Now, the dream is that players will be able to command armies, but that's only a pipe dream for now, so this might be a step in the right direction though. This stream then moved on to look at the wide swath of items that will be included in the Architect of Argos DLC, including armors, weapons, horse armors, and a bevy of building items all inspired by Ancient Greek. And sticking with MassivelyOP.com, Elite Dangerous is delaying its next era content into 2021. 
And again, as I repeat myself, it's because of the global situation that you guys know about. Heading back over to MMORPG.com, a Daru festival underway in Arc Age. The festival is set to run through May 14th, and if you're at level 30 or higher, you'll be able to partake in daily quests for the festival. But as always, I'll definitely have the links to this down in the pinned comment section below. And that concludes today's episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. If you haven't done so, please consider subscribing and leaving a like as well as hitting the bell notification. It does help the channel a lot. I'm almost at 100 subscribers, which I will admit the grind is real, but it's been a lot of fun too as well. But in any event, I hope you guys stay safe out there. Please have a blessed night and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers again, everyone.